Hello, everyone. Pally Tim here. Welcome back to Hogwarts Legacy. Welcome back, Michael Danger Magus. I was in my room of requirement, which, by the way, I'm still not used to how good it looks in here. It's still phenomenal. And Deke reached out, says he wants to speak with us. And, well, we've done a lot for Deke already. Every time we've done a mission for him, we've gotten more beast storage. So I'm assuming that if we continue to do his quest, he's going to continue to expand our room of requirement. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. I'm trying to keep these short, sweet, and to the point. But still make them fun for everyone involved. Also, I love reading the comments where you replace Michael's middle name with a funny thing. That's been my favorite gag over the course of the series, and I just wanted to let you guys know that. I wanted to make that official. Hi, Deke. Hello, Deke. You wanted to talk to me. Indeed. Uh, Deke thought you might want to learn how to build a breeding pen so that you can breed beasts. Breed beasts? Can't I simply rescue the beast? Do we have to make the multiplies? Well, I'd like that. That sounds like a very good idea. Rescuing and breeding beasts go hand in hand. Uh, young beasts are particularly vulnerable to poachers. Breeding beasts here in the room will allow us to keep the younger ones safe. I see. What do I need to do? First, bring a pair of beasts to the room. One male, one female. Deke suggests rescuing Thestrals, as they're at great risk from poachers. Noble creatures, but their relationship with death gives them a bad reputation. They're prized by poachers for their tail hairs. I've seen Thestrals before, but where would I find a pair of them nearby? Deke has seen some wild Thestrals not too far from the Hogwarts grounds. Then you'll need to purchase a spellcraft for the pen from Tomes and Scrolls and gather the materials it requires. Once you've rescued the Thestrals and you have the spellcraft, you come and find Deke. That was a big list of things, Deke. You're really expecting a lot of me. Now, funny enough, I have gone after Thestrals many, many times before, and in fact, in between episodes, well, I haven't done as much with the animal handling as I wanted to. I did go out for some shiny Pokemon hunting. So I know that there's a Thestral Den right here. I've cleared it out many times, and this should be very easy. Just get the hot bar ready. We want an Accio, a rest of momentum, and the nab sack. Yeah, these guys really stand out even at night here. Accio. Really pretty creatures, to be honest. I don't remember. Uh, if we have a boy or a girl already, so I guess I'll just capture one of both. I do find it kind of interesting that we have to go to the scroll guy instead of the beast area for this, but I guess he does sell all of the other stuff for the room of requirement, too. Uh, funny enough, I already bought all the best things from him, so... Oh, it's a thousand gold. That's totally fine. We've accumulated a fair bit of wealth in our time here, so a thousand gold's nothing. Uh, the rest of these are actually downgrades to what we already have. Yes, I'm positive. So I don't want to waste any money on that. But that was pretty quick and easy. Let's get back. I've rescued the Thestrals and bought the spellcraft for the pen. Excellent. Now... To breed your Thestrals, simply release them into the same vivarium in which you conjure the pen. Then use the pen to start the process. Come and see Deke when you're finished. Wait a I minute. Shall. I wonder where I should conjure their pen. Michael, you have two options. It's not that big of a decision. Wait a minute. Three options? Oh, I bet this one's going to be all spooky themed. That's why they wanted me to get the Thestral. Man, that is so cool. Oh, they did such a good job with that. Um, if I require a breeding pen, why doesn't the room of requirement make it for me? We now have the perfect place for those thestrals. Please let Deke know once you've bred them. Deke's very interested in this breeding. <laughs> All right, manage beasts. I have two thestrals, and they have been placed down. Ne Ooh, hello. Hello, good to see you. Uh, then we swap over to the conjuring spell and create the beast pin. We should probably put this kind of close to the entrance, you know, just to have it nearby. I don't, 
I don't know. It sounds kind of weird now that I said that out loud. Right here should do, though. You guys like that? Is that good for you? You know, I suppose there's nothing stopping me from also placing down a beast feeder. We'll put that right over here by the water. And a toy box for them to enjoy as well. We should definitely put that by the breeding pin. <laughs> All right, that's our setup. It looks like I have to use the breeding pin to get them to, you know, cooperate. Uh, this wasn't loading for me at first, though. I had to actually leave the castle and then come back. But all things sorted. Choose the species. Thestrals, of course. Is that a little privacy for them? Half an hour. You stud. Well, while we're waiting for our animals to make the miracle of life, Poppy actually reached out. We were with her last episode, breaking up a poacher dragon ring. That was such... A fun episode. She thinks she knows what she wants to do next, and she has a plan. We just got to meet up with her. She's talking to me through a solid wall at the moment. I took the most backwards way of getting into the three broomsticks today. You know, my little quest I had before to get some butterbeer. Turns out if you come here to the back corner, Everyone just left their mugs unattended. Unlimited butterbee. Of course, you know, I still haven't been served by the staff, but hey, that's okay. Hey, Papi! This is a change of pace from our last outing. Don't remind me. The thought of that tent still makes my blood boil. I've been thinking about those poor dragons in the fighting ring. The collars they were wearing, they appeared to be goblin silver. I think a collar is precisely what we found at that poacher camp. Oh, yeah. I've never known poachers to use anything like that before. The dragon that attacked my carriage was wearing a collar, and Professor Fig was genuinely baffled by its behavior. That attack always did strike me as a little strange, seemingly coming out of nowhere. Surely you aren't suggesting that the collars somehow control the poor creatures? Maybe. Exactly. Merlin. I don't think the dragon we set free was wearing a collar, but we should check. And if we can find her, we can return her egg. What if I want to keep the egg? <laughs> Haven't we done enough for that dragon already? That's the most unhufflepuff thing I have ever heard. We should definitely check on her. That's a good idea. We need to see this through. I'll start looking into it right away. There was something else that I wanted to discuss with you. I didn't want to press it before. What's on your mind? It seems I may have caused you more trouble with Victor Rookwood. Why is he after you? Are you prying more? Oh, fine. All right, Poppy. It's got to do with Ranrock. I'm in some deep wizard shit, you could say. Get really serious. It's definitely fifth year problems. Rookwood is working with Ranrock, and Ranrock is after something I found at Gringotts. Fig had a port key that led us there after the dragon attack. Oh, spilling the beans. It's a bit of a long story, and Fig had asked that I not speak of it yet. Goodness. Well, that certainly helps to shed light on what we saw at the tent. Don't worry. I'll guard your secret as if it were my own. I'd I expect nothing less. Details. In fact, I should probably be going. I'd like to track that dragon down as soon as I can. Oh, with the... I'll let you know when I have news of her location. Well, fantastic. With the way this was going, I thought we were going to be heading there straight away. You know, Lumos. I do trust Poppy with that secret. She's a Hufflepuff just like me. She's loyal. We also have a quest to potentially unlock our final yellow spell. This is transformation. If we complete all the requirements and then attend class tomorrow... We should be good to go. Transforms objects and enemies into alternative forms, whether puzzle solutions or harmless knickknacks. Oof, I would hate to be turned into a harmless knickknack. Uh, in order to complete the quest, we have to find some field guides down here. I'm actually not 100% on the location. If you look at the Hogwarts map, it was like right around here. Professor Weasley assignment. I need to find the field guides uh, for the book Intermediate Transfiguration in the library, as well as the field guide about the underground harbor. Well, it looks like this is probably the harbor. We know where the library is already. 
So let's see this first. There's also a boathouse over here that we've never ventured into that I think has another side quest in it, but I think it's just like for some, uh, you know, vanity gear, like appearance stuff. This looks cool. Can't enter while mounted. Am I really supposed to swim in the frozen water? Oh. Do I have a spell to heat me back? Oh, this is where they... This is where they stack the first year boats. Wow. You know, I was wondering that actually. I was wondering that. Uh, this is the underground harbor. The field guide should be right around here. Yes, indeed. Located deep beneath the viaduct courtyard is the landing for boats delivering first year students across the Black Lake to Hogwarts. That is so neat. It even has a nice elevator to leave here so I don't have to swim back in the water. And the great library should be right through this door. With any luck, let's hope our book isn't in the restricted section. Actually, it looks like it's up on the second floor. I've looted this place pretty thoroughly for collectibles in between episodes, but definitely never checked out any books here. Right on the far end. Am I going to have to pull up one of those stairs? It should be around here somewhere. Revelio. Is this the Revelio situation? I am looking for it. Are you looking for it too? Professor Weasley asked me to uh, get something from that book. May I have it? Did she now? I'll give you this book if you humor me by answering a few questions from my quiz. Quiz? Some people call bits of knowledge trivia. I would argue that no knowledge is trivial. Hence, I have created a small quiz just for fun. What a Ravenclaw, dude. The law of the wizarding world. Ugh. None of the other students will try it, no matter how many times I ask. They all say they have enough with schoolwork. Well, yeah. Ugh. They don't value knowledge the way I do. Surely you're interested. I'll even start you off with a few of my easiest questions. You know that I'm... I. This is like my... Maybe third week of school, right? I mean, I guess a few seasons have passed. I may, maybe I'm not giving myself enough credit. Um, <clears throat> this could be fun. I'm going to get the book after this, right? A quiz sounds like fun. Splendid. Just a few questions and then I'll hand over this book. Let us begin. Before the invention of the Golden Snitch, which magical creature was used in a game of Quidditch? Uh, I literally have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, the golden snignit, the golden snuggery, or the snake bird. I'm going to say the snake bird because it's different from the other two. The snake bird. No, incorrect. The answer was the golden snidget. Wow. The snidget was first introduced oh, in 1269 by a wizard named Barbarous <laughs> Bragg. Sadly, they're thought to be extinct. Next question. All right. Which potion is commonly referred to as liquid luck? Oh, I know this. I don't think it's I don't think it's the pepper potion. And I don't think they ever called it a drought. I'm going to go with Felix Felixus? Is, that's not even how you say it, is it? I'm just doing this by process of elimination. I really thought I remembered this. Felix Felicis. Well done. Oh, Since yeah. the drinker temporarily lucky, Felix Felicis is a banned substance in all organized competitions. The Tale of the Three Brothers involves which magical artifacts? The Tale of the Three Brothers. It is the Deathly Hallows. The Deathly Hallows. Correct. According to Beedle the Bard, the Deathly Hallows consists of the Elder Wand, the Resurrection Stone, and the Cloak of Invisibility. Mm -hmm. Which ball in Quidditch is the largest? Uh, the Snitch is the smallest. The Bludger is what you hit people with. So I'm going to say the Bludger. The Bludger. I'm sorry, but the correct answer is... Quaffle! When a chaser throws the Quaffle through one of three hoops in a Quidditch match, their team is awarded 10 points. True or false? Polyjuice potion allows the drinker to change species. Uh, cat. What do you consider half human, half cat? 
Yes. True. Actually, the answer was false. Good. While Polyjuice Potion can be used to change things such as age or race, <laughs> it cannot be used to change species. Oh, that's Hermione! Well, I suppose this has gone on long enough. I'll put the book back on the pedestal. <sighs> if you're inclined to test your knowledge again, I have plenty more questions I could ask you. Do and you? I won't be giving you any more easy questions either. Those are the it's easy ones! Difficult. <sighs> well, you know what? I'd like more questions. I'm just waiting on some animals to bone anyway. I'd like to answer more questions. What governmental body directly preceded the Ministry of Magic? Pr what? Uh, the Order of... Uh, uh... The Order of Merlin was like... Wasn't that in the Order of the Phoenix? I'm gonna say the Wizards Council? The Wizards Council. That's correct. Hey! The Wizards Council disbanded in 1707 after the creation of the International Statute of Wizarding Secrecy, which required a more structured government to support its enforcement. Which dragon breed is the smallest? Oh, uh, jeez. Um, I'm going to say Vipertooth. If it's small, it might have venom. The Peruvian Vipertooth. Brilliant! Hey. Though the Vipertooth is the smallest breed, averaging at around 15 feet in length, it is also the fastest breed and feared for its venomous fangs. Who founded the village of Hogsmeade? Oh, I feel like they literally said this. Mm, Hengist of Woodcroft! Yes! There was a statue! Hengist of Woodcroft. That's right! It is believed that Hengis used the Three Broomsticks Inn as his home. The hide behind was accidentally created by crossbreeding a ghoul with what other magical creature? No idea what you're even talking about. Is the hide behind? What is... what is... Uh, what is that? A rune spore. That's incorrect. The answer was a demigod. Oh, really? While the hide behind has the power of invisibility, those who have seen it have described it as a tall, thin monkey with silver hair. Interesting. What is the only spell known to repel a lethefold? Uh, uh, repel a lethefold. I am going to say the. It's not the Patronus. That's. That's for Dementors. The knockback jinx. The knockback jinx. Actually, the answer was the... What?! The only known survivor of a Lethifold attack was a wizard named Flavius Belby, who was on holiday in Papua New Guinea at the time. How do you know he this? published the law of elemental transfiguration. Can I quit? Um, uh, who are these? Evangeline Orpington. That's incorrect. The answer I was looking for was Gamp. Well, you didn't find that answer, did you? Gamp's law is that food cannot be conjured, though it can be summoned. What does the Hogwarts motto translate to? The not um knowledge is the real magic sounds so corny that I believe it. Knowledge is the real magic. No, the answer was <laughs> no. <laughs> In Latin, the Hogwarts motto is Draco Dormian's Nunquam Titillandus. Which magical creature is the only one known to produce eggs through its mouth? Through its mouth? The basilisk. I don't know. The basilisk. That's incorrect. The correct answer was the rune's paw. Oh, this is humiliating. God, get me out of here! The paw's three heads serves a different function. The left head is the planner, the middle is the dreamer, and the right is the critic. That's kind of cool. Where is Ilvermorny School of Witchcraft and Wizardry located? Ilvermorny. Oh, shh. Um. Uh, isn't Ilvermorny the American school? It's in mountains. Mount Greylock. Well done. The American school was founded in the Oh, thank God I knew something. By Esalt Sare and James Stewart. What is the most powerful love potion known to wizard kind? Isn't it just called the the love potion? They did this in one of the movies, right? Uh, I think they would call it an elixir. Elixir to induce euphoria. Incorrect. The answer <laughs> was amatentia. Amatentia smells differently to every person. God, this is a nightmare. Find attractive, such as dusty book covers or. <clears throat> Are you interested in continuing on to the next round? 
They're my most difficult questions. I am not, unless chat wants me to come back and suffer some more. I don't have time for another quiz at the moment. That's fine. Come and find me if you'd like to try later. Be honest, how many of these did you get right? I put the book back on the pedestal for you. Be Revelio oh, right. Quick work of this. Right, she put the book on the Revelio. pedestal. Okay. Thanks. The book is designed to help guide the student who wishes to pursue more complicated types of transfiguration. Professor Weasley often recommends it to her advanced students as a bit of light reading. Complete. I should attend transfiguration. That was the scariest thing I've ever done. A quiz in a video game. Ooh. Who's ready for a transfiguration class montage? I actually think this would be my favorite class other than beasts. I think transfiguration is really cool. The idea of turning something into something else, super neat. Like, look at this. Just down. So Let cool. Down. Transfiguration, Trans as you may be weary of hearing me say, is an exact science that can take a lifetime to master. But we needn't be daunted. Almost anything can be transformed if you can just perceive the potential within it. As I see in all of you, tremendous witches and wizards, every one of you. Or it could just be my eyesight. Now, you all know what to do. I don't think I do, Professor. <laughs> I wasn't the only one that looked confused as well. This is takes a lifetime to master making a backwards U with your wand? I know it's not as simple as that. I know it's not. What did we make? A butterfly, just like Professor First Try to. Natural born transformer. It looks like the class did well. So what are the limitations to this? Like, can... Can anything be turned into anything? I mean, I know she literally just said it's up to my imagination, but like, really, what are the limitations of this? There's, there's no way. It's just imagination. Well, I do have a resto memento on another bar, but for no real particular reason. It actually makes more sense on our knapsack bar. So, is she going to give me targets to give it a go, Professor? You wanted to discuss my progress so far this term, Professor. I did. You seem to have had no trouble in getting up to speed. And frankly, excelling in your schoolwork this year. Nice. Michael failed the Ravenclaw test, Magus. Well, the, the, actually, the, the assignments have helped. Uh, I've been doing a lot of exploring and a lot of learning. Thank you, Professor. The extra assignments have been helpful. As I suspected they would be. Now, it seems you've been making excellent use of the opportunities presented by your field guide. Of course, the guide isn't the only measure of success. Deke tells me you captured a unicorn and brought it back to the room of requirement. Yes, ma'am. Protecting so rare a beast is an accomplishment of which you can be quite proud. Thank you, Professor. I will say I'm especially impressed with all you've accomplished in light of the rumors of your extracurricular activities i don't know what you're talking about professor to an ex aura in upper hogsfield connected in any way to professor fig i can't begin to imagine what that was about then i recommend not imagining what that was about oh do i say yes or no no it's not connected not connected at all i actually you know uh, don't even remember seeing an aura in upper hogsfield not at all I was um, merely interested in learning more about the Aura program. I saw Professor Sharp's Aura badge and was intrigued. I see. I admire your penchant for learning, but do remember that your classwork and field guide are designed to educate you thoroughly. It'll be the end of the year in no time, and you'll want to be well prepared for your OWLs. Oh, I'll provide God. a final assessment at that time to ensure that you're ready for your exams. Until then, well done. You are dismissed. I'm not actually going to have to take my owls, am I? Because I couldn't even do that Ravenclaw test. Finally, back to the room of requirements. I hope the business has been done. It looks like the privacy curtain's down, so perhaps... Oh, look at that! 
What? Wow. You guys work fast. I'm impressed. Hold on, let me get it. Let me get out my brush. Make sure everyone is feeling welcomed. It looks like everyone's pretty well fed. I should let Deke know about the newborn Thestral. I should. Welcome to the family. I hope you enjoy your stay. <laughs> wow. All right, I did hear from Poppy as well as Sebastian, both of them checking back in with me, letting me know they think they know the next step to proceed. I think that sounds pretty good. We'll be leading into those adventures in the next couple of episodes. Just wanted to lay the breadcrumbs down for you. But we'll end off today talking to Deke. Hello, Deke. You'll be pleased to know that a little Thestral was born. How wonderful to have more Thestrals in our world. Such misunderstood beasts. Completely agree. I'm sorry that we can both see Thestrals, Deke. Deke is privileged to see such majestic beasts. But sometimes wishes Deke couldn't. Deke is to blame. What do you mean, to blame? What happened? Years ago, Deke's master ordered Deke to help him capture a phoenix, the rarest of all beasts that master had spotted high on a cliff. The phoenix was the most beautiful beast Deke had ever seen. Deke begged master to leave her be. When Deke hesitated to climb up the cliff as ordered, Deke had to punish himself. As Deke punished himself, Master grew angrier and angrier, and in his frustration, cast at the regal bird. Deke suspects the phoenix was protecting eggs when it swooped down in fear and fury. Before Deke could reach him, Master fell from the cliff. Oh no! He stayed on that cliffside for days, punishing himself, before Tobbs found him. Oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you, Deke. Your master sounds like a piece of shit, but I'm so sorry that happened to you. What a horrible tale, Deke. I'm so sorry. Deke has only told Professor Weasley that story. And now yourself. I'm a secret Deke keeper. Deke often wonders what became of that phoenix. Deke feels fortunate to be at Hogwarts now, helping you rescue beasts. Perhaps Deke can make amends for what came before. What a camera view to come back to. Well, Deke, thank you so much for teaching me about that. You know, I think the poachers actually were looking for a phoenix. Wonder if they ever found one. We're not going to find out today. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you enjoyed the episode, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And I will see you again tomorrow. Deke, did you just summon an apple right behind me there? It's kind of weird. Kind of strange, my dude. Giving me weird vibes right now, Deke.